Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mobile Weekly slash Mobile Q&A, where we get all latest news started and answer your questions live. If you have a question you want to ask, just ask it in the comment section down below, and I will answer it before the end of the show. All right, guys, we got some pretty interesting topics today. Um, I do want to ask you guys, though, um, I am planning on doing a town hall of sorts for the channel um doing a basically an update on the channel i am leaning towards either friday or saturday of this week so let me know what day and what time should i pick for friday it can be as early as 9 30 a.m pacific standard time or as late as 8 p.m pacific standard time uh, for Saturday, it would be 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So let me know in the comment section down below what what time and day do you think I should set it up? And even if you're watching this later, let me know and we will go back over that uh, to kind of, it's gonna be some updates to the channel, um, some questions I'm gonna ask you guys. And yeah, some uh, changes are happening. So I want your guys' input on it. All right. Now, without further ado, uh, let's get started with the news. Okay, so first off, uh, we do have the Galaxy Z Flip 3, maybe as low as a hundred bucks, or sorry, a thousand bucks. Whoa, a hundred bucks. Uh, that, was a, that was a nice 40 inch slip right there. Uh, but um, it looks like it could be as low as 990 to a thousand two hundred. Now, a thousand two hundred would still be cheaper than any of the Z Flip to date, but it looks like the Z Flip 3 will definitely be cheaper, it looks like, than the other series uh, so far. And that includes the Fold and the Z Flip 1 and 2. So that's pretty interesting. I I'm very interested to see what price point we're gonna end up getting in this uh, device. I don't see Samsung going down to a thousand because quite frankly, I don't think it would just make sense. Um, unless Samsung went like a cheaper processor in here and that could be a very interesting route. I don't think people that get the flip series would be upset, honestly, as much as, um, if it had a Snapdragon 700 series as opposed to an 800 series. Um, and especially if it dropped the price to a thousand dollars, I totally think that would sell very well, actually and it would be a great way to do foldables. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what Samsung really has in store for it. I have to say though, these designs I am really liking. Like I have gone from wanting the Z Fold 3 for a long time to now not really caring about the Z Fold 3 and actually thinking about the Z Flip 3 as a uh, secondary device. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments section. Um, for me, again, I see this as an okay phone uh, in terms of overall uh, everything you need. But I think the coolest part about this is obviously the flip and I'm very curious to see how that would go overall. So very curious to see. Okay, and this one was a big, big, big uh, anticipation, right? Apple versus Facebook. Uh, Personalized ads are based on everything you have looked for, typed, searched, everything that uh, has gone on in your phone, the places you go, everything is based on app tracking. And iPhones have uh, made it an opt-in model instead of an opt-out model. Meaning right now, if you're being tracked on a phone, say an Android a Galaxy phone or something like that, you have to opt out to get out of being tracked or doing app tracking. However, for iPhones, they have changed that. They have said from the beginning now, do you want to opt in to being tracked? And that wording is very, very difficult to get around, right? You do not want, I don't want to be tracked. I don't want to be tracked or anything like that. I personally don't mind being tracked more so by a company like Google because I have more trust in a company like Google than Facebook, quite frankly. I'm not saying Google's perfect, but in terms of 
giving everyone my information. I just, I don't trust Facebook anywhere near as much as Google is. Um, and I do like personalized ads. I'd rather have personalized ads than not personalized ads, to be quite honest. But all of this is really, really interesting because Apple, in their last update, did an opt-in route. And everyone's been seeing how much is it going to hurt P companies like Facebook specifically. Um, because their ads are so based on targeting. That is how they get so much revenue and it will hurt their revenue model a lot. So much so that out of a million users that were tracked, it looks like 4% out of a million users uh, opted in to be tracked. That is so interesting because again, this isn't worldwide, this isn't, any other, but again, to, to get a small, small scope out of a million people that had this Verizon, um, the, parent, uh, the parent company's um, basically like app for tracking, out of a million people, 4% said okay. So again, this is very interesting and I'm very curious on, uh, you know, are you opting in to be tracked by all apps or are you opting in to be only tracked by certain apps? what kind of thing will this create? Because um, it is a big thing. And I, I, I don't know, again, I'm in marketing, so I've always known exactly why you're being tracked. So maybe that's why I'm more open to it. But it's really an interesting thing that it was that low. Um, but yeah, it was, it was very interesting to see. It's from uh, Fury Analytics that did this. And they saw out of a million of their um, subscribers, only um, only four percent gave in to being tracked. Um, so that's really just interesting. After the update has occurred, so yeah, very interesting in that aspect. Okay, so so right now everything is, tracking wise is all about Tile versus Apple AirTags, but. Samsung SmartThings came out with some tags when the S21 came out. They haven't gotten much attention, but now it's so interesting, right? Because now Samsung just got a huge partner and that is Windows 10. So Windows 10, you can now install the SmartThings app from the Windows Store. Now, the reason why this is significant is not so much that, okay, we're getting an app on Windows. That is pretty significant that they're officially a SmartThings app you can install on any Windows computer, no problem. The interesting part is, is if this starts coming pre-installed or some manufacturers get on board with Samsung that are outside of Samsung. So what if Dell were to put it on every Dell laptop? What if, you know, all these different things the reason why that's so big is because it would then make Samsung be a real big player in this because of course in every Windows laptop that has this SmartThings app built into it is now pinging when you're missing something. So that's very interesting. That was a huge get for Samsung. And again, it doesn't mean the most right now, but what it does mean is it has the potential for Samsung to partner with other laptop manufacturers to have this pre-installed, like HP will totally pre-install this. HP pre-installs everything. So like if you're a manufacturer like that, that is gonna pre-install a lot of things, that one is gonna be one that I could definitely see um, happening. So very interesting aspect. And of course all Galaxy books, like every Samsung laptop from this point forward will have this built into it. So again, it's going to help them get more devices out there that will then have a ping for their network when you're trying to find something. So I think that's really cool. Um, and again, even, even though I don't see the Samsung book part of it having as much influence, if Samsung can get it pre-installed on other laptops from here on out, over the next three years, they could have a huge ecosystem with that. Okay, um, Galaxy watches. So it looks like we are gonna have two sets of Galaxy watches. We're gonna have a Galaxy Watch 4 and a Galaxy Watch Active 4. So the reason why that's interesting is because we're having two sets of watches and one of the things that I'm very interested in for that is that 
when it comes to the Galaxy Watch 4 and the Galaxy Watch Active 4, are we going to have one with Tizen and one with Wear OS? Or are they both going to have Wear OS or are they both going to have Tizen? I think both are not going to have Tizen. I think you're at least going to have one all Wear OS. And I think that's a very, very smart play, quite frankly, for Samsung to do. Because I don't think people are ready to go completely Wear OS, in my opinion. But I don't think that, you know, Samsung obviously wants to try it. Uh, because of the money and lucrative uh, ability in there. So it's very curious to see how that will go. Uh, what we do know now, though, is the sizes of the bands. So for the Galaxy Watch 4, it's getting slightly bigger. So instead of 41 and 45 millimeters, we're going to have a 42 and 46 millimeters. So it's going to get slightly bigger on the Galaxy Watch Four. However, for the active size, they're actually going to get smaller. So on the active size, it's going to be the same 40 millimeter for the smaller size, but the bigger size is actually only going to be 42 now, which I don't really see the point in having a 40 and 42. I would have made it a 38 and a 42. I think when you're getting it that size, it's, it's just, it's such a minuscule difference, 40 and 42 millimeters. I mean, you're literally talking about a two millimeter difference. I just, I don't see the point, but I think it's just a cost uh, thing why they kept the 40 millimeter one. Um, nonetheless, though, that is going to be smaller. So it looks like the active series is getting smaller and the Galaxy Watch series is getting bigger. I'm very curious that I like a bigger watch uh, face. I haven't had one that I really see as too big. This is a Galaxy Watch 3, so again, it will be slightly bigger instead of the 45 millimeter that I have, it will be a 46 millimeter on the next one. So I'm all for that, really uh, very curious to see how that will go. Let me know your guys' thoughts on it. Um, very curious to see what we're going to be getting again in the short coming weeks. This is expected to be announced in August. And um, a trademark is speculating that the Z Flip 3 that we talked about earlier, or at least the Z Flip in the future, could have S Pen support, again, just as the S21 Ultra has outside S Pen support. So basically you can buy a pen that will work with the Z Flip and you have that capability. That is a very interesting concept that Samsung might just be digitizing everything now. Um, I, I just don't want them to think that again, the note only was the pen because again, people will still buy a note in 2021 or, or sorry, in 2022, uh, 2021 will not have a galaxy note. We'd have that confirmed already, but in 2022, people will buy a galaxy note over an S23 ultra or S22 ultra just because of the fact that they feel it's a better phone. So it's not all about the pen, but Samsung bringing in the pen to yet another device, a very interesting device, mind you, to have a pen on, is interesting. Um, I don't think the Z Flip, for me personally, has a big enough screen for me to care about the pen, but we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Uh, Microsoft has reportedly uh, abandoned, or at least stopped for the time being, development on Windows 10X. Now this was their split screen uh, interface they were going to introduce with the Neo and it looks like it would have been a failure so they're not developing it anymore. Um, I find it interesting they just kind of gave up before even releasing the Neo. Um, you know, we know they have the Surface Duo and it didn't do that well with software. So maybe they're gonna try to perfect the Duo first and then come out with the Neo later. Um, I could see them having a Surface 2 this year and then coming out with the Neo next year. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see as of right now, this operating system has been put on hold. They're not working on it at all right now, at least for the time being. I'm fine with that. Work out all the stuff on Android first, then go to your own operating system in terms of a mobility uh, sphere. And uh, Mark Zuckerberg did actually um, basically say that they are working on a Quest Pro, so a new 
version of the quest that will be coming out this year. I'm very excited for this because I think I'm ready to get back into VR. I've not been into VR since the, you know, the Gear VR days and the first Vive. And um, I, I never had an Oculus, did I? I, I don't think I ever had a, a straight up Oculus. Um, so I'm very curious to see how this will go. Uh, but I'm, I've heard great things about the Quest 2. I did think about getting it this year, but the idea of a Quest Pro interests me very well enough to wait. So I'm going to have to wait and see how this one goes. Okay. And then finally, it looks like TSMC could be building a lot more plants in the U S in the upcoming years. Now, for those of you who don't know, TSMC is the biggest semiconductor manufacturer in the world right now. They're the ones that are being tasked at this very moment to make all the processors for everything. And that's why we have such a shortage right now, because they are very constrained. Um, and again, they make the most. So every company is constrained. I don't care if you're Apple. I don't care if you're Qualcomm, you're Samsung, you're a car manufacturer you're a manufacturer of things like Google Home or Nest Home or Amazon Echo, they're all constrained right now. Um, and again, it's because this company and Samsung is number two, make so many processors and they can only make so many along with Intel and AMD, but it's just, it's so constrained at this point and uh, making more plants obviously will help. Samsung's making one in the U.S. in Texas. Uh, TSMC is already scheduled to make one um, that should launch, I think, 2024 in Arizona. So uh, that they are getting built, but again, it's going to take time uh, so that we shouldn't have a shortage again in the future. Uh, but everything is moving this way in terms of everything having a computer inside of it. So that's why there's such a shortage when that happens. All right, guys, now let's get started with your questions. If you have a question you wanna ask, just let me know in the comment section down below and I will answer it before the end of the show. I did want to, if I'm not mistaken, we did have uh, one last news actually that I said this, uh, I hinted at it a little bit ago, but that the Z Flip 3 and the Z Fold 3 and the Galaxy Watch 4 and the S21 FE all look like they will be released in August still. So it looks like it will be released in August. Um, the announcement could be at the beginning of August or it could be at the end of July, but it looks like it could be around mid August and come out at the end of August is what they're saying right now because of all the processor constraints that we just talked about but we'll have to wait and see. So that is what we're hearing right now is that although Samsung would have liked to release it in July and come out and everything, it does not look like that will happen. All right, guys, uh, before I do get to the questions, I did want to let you guys know again uh, what I talked about at the beginning of the show, just in case you missed it. I am going to be doing a uh, town hall kind of uh, meeting basically with um, all my viewers um, that want to tune in either on Friday or Saturday. Uh, Saturday, I can do basically 8 p.m. or uh, or on Friday, I can do 8 p.m. or I can do Friday morning at 9.30 a.m. These are all Pacific Standard Time times. Uh, but let me know what you guys prefer in those times. And uh, again, those are what I'm looking at this week, Friday or Saturday, and we will set up a live show for that day. And I'm going to tell you about some changes happening to the channel, some uh, changes in content, as well as an additional channel that's ready to launch or that already has launched, actually. Um, so, yeah, a lot of different things I'll be talking about. So, again, let me know what, what time uh, or day you guys think would be best. Let me know in the comment section. Okay. Hey. Bear, I think that is. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat donation and the thumbs up. If you do have any question or comment, let me know and I will answer it. So let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for the super chat donation though. I really do appreciate it. Um, 
Hello everyone, question about text messaging with T-Mobile. Had Sprint and had enhanced texts. Uh, the receive and sent delivered read, but now I don't have it since I switched to T-Mobile SIM. Uh, note 10. Um, it could be actually that you will get it because I do have that uh, ability. Um, so I'm not sure if it's because of the device was made for Sprint and then you put in a T-Mobile SIM in it, um, which again does work obviously, but that might be one of the limitations of it. Um, but that's all I can say is that I, I don't think um, there's any setting you could change. You can make sure the APN is correct if you do a Google search for T-Mobile um, LTE or 5G APN um, online and look at what it's supposed to be and make sure that you go into your APN, uh, which is under settings and then net connections and the network. Um, it, it tells you how to get to it if you search for it as well. But um, see if you can find that and make sure your APN is correct because messages do vary from carrier to carrier and that might be it, you need MMS and all these different ones, uh, but they, they do vary from carrier to carrier, so it might still be on the old version. Um, did you see the Kentucky uh, Ballistics YouTube video? No. Let's see. No, I have no idea what this is. Oh, uh, why should I have seen it? Let me know. Um, what is a good all-in-one desktop for under 700? Um, Scooter, I will try to look for a all-in-one tomorrow for um, our uh, tech deals video. Uh, but as of right now, I cannot think of one off the top of my head, to be quite honest. Um, I just, I don't know. The main thing I would look for in an all-in-one is at least an i5 processor. They tend to start off at Pentium, Celerons, and i3 processors, and um, you will be outdated quickly if you do that. So I definitely recommend starting at least with an i5 or a Ryzen 5 processor um, and up. Um, but yeah, that's the main thing I would look for uh, starting first and foremost. Um, also, if you can upgrade the RAM, all-in-ones are typically all you get. Um, and uh, my main thing is they typically start off at 8 gigs of RAM. So again, what I'm looking for uh, would be a i5 or a Ryzen 5 processor uh, built into it and 16 gigs of RAM. I'm not saying it's definitely out there for under 700, but that's what I would be looking for. Um, and again, I will f if I find any good ones, I will show them uh, on tech deals tomorrow. I think that's still too expensive for a flip. Um, I think $1,000 is honestly a really good price for a flip uh, because you're basically getting an S21 with the foldable display. So I think I think $1,000 is, is a great price for a flip that is um, worth it at that price. A little bit more, I think you're still paying tax on the fact that it's a new product kind of thing. Have you heard about the Galaxy Watch 4 coming? Yes, I did, and I talked about it. Also, happy Mother's Day to YouTube Tech Wife and YouTube Tech Grandmother. Uh, thank you, I do appreciate that. And yes, I got to see, uh, of course, I saw my wife, and then I saw my mom today, and made sure that they had a great day. Whoa, a whole bunch of questions just loaded. Everybody drink. Samsung Cloud will be no more soon. Um, yeah, I, I never use Samsung Cloud. I've always been a Google Drive person and a, um, and a, and a Google Photos person, obviously. So uh, those are the ones that I really recommend. But yeah, that's um, the big parts of it for sure. Do you think the Fold 3 will have an underscreen fingerprint? Um, no, I think it'll still have a side fingerprint for the Fold 3. And it works so well, so I don't see why they would change that, to be quite honest. Um, 
how big did you think uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming will be and will it last? Thank you for the great show. Thanks. Um, I really do believe that X, uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming is really big. I believe that the more we can get our high-end games on our phones, it's a really cool thing. The, the biggest thing is lag, and, and it, it's something that I think it's going to take time uh, to get over. But, I mean, that's the whole thing of, you know, Stadia, Xbox Cloud Gaming, uh, PlayStation's going to come out with their own. I truly do believe it, that will really be made to compete with it, not just in your own Wi-Fi like you can now uh, with PlayStation, but anywhere you go. Um, so I, I really do think that it is big, and I know NVIDIA and Steam have done it as well. Uh, but again, lag is the biggest thing. Um, a Samsung S9 Plus renewed on Amazon 287 or Galaxy A52 4G for 330, which is the better buy? I would actually go for the um, Galaxy A52. I'm not going to lie for that one. I, I, think, I think if it were to be... Definitely an S20, but like an S10 Plus, I would probably get over uh, maybe an A52. Uh, for the camera quality, I think it would be much better. But an A52 processor-wise will honestly pretty much be better than an S9 Plus at this point. Um, battery is obviously going to be way better. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just I think an A52 is, is a much better bet than a model that old at this point. Um, so yeah, again, an S10 Plus, maybe more of a, ooh, which one kind of thing. But for an A52 4G, solid get. I, I love the phone when I used it. Um, I ended up uh, selling it uh, just because I obviously didn't need it. But um, yeah, I, I really, I thought it was a really uh, good one for sure. What are your thoughts on the new Samsung laptops? If you were going to buy one, which one would you get? So my, my issue with the Samsung laptops is you have to get a i7 model for the regular Pro to get 16 gigs. And again, I'm a big component, big, big uh, pr proponent of, uh, of you always going for 16 gigs of RAM especially when you can't upgrade the RAM. Um, it's the best thing to do for going for the long run for most people. I think eight gigs is a great starting point, but we don't buy our laptops to switch them out every year or every two years. Laptops are meant to last us, you know, three to really closer to five years in my personal experience. So I really always recommend, you know, plan for not, you know, Oh, I'm starting off college. Plan for is this going to be a lot allowing me to go through college and my first year of whatever job I'm at? Is this going to be able to take me through high school and my first year of college? Like th those are the kind of things that like I really always like to let people know because a laptop isn't going to be something I think you're switching out so often. So I would really recommend plan for the long haul get at least an i5 or a Ryzen 5 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and then you'd uh, be good. So for Samsung laptops, I think the OLEDs are really cool. I think um, they are too expensive for what you're getting, in my opinion. I think they have the OLED, and that's why they feel like they could get it. But um, just to give you an example, a good example of a great counter laptop uh, to that um, is, I had it saved before, but it was Asus. So this one I would personally get instead of a, um, of the Samsung ones. So I think this is a, I think there was a cheaper version too, but just doing a quick search. Oh yeah, here we go. I love 
Okay. So just doing a quick uh, one. This one is awesome, right? And it has even like the trackpad uh, calculator built into it. Um, and it has Harman Kardon speakers from Samsung. Really great all around. It has an OLED and it is $1199 with giving you the 16 gigs of RAM, the i7 processor and 512. If I'm not mistaken, the Samsung model is at least $200 more for those same specs for the 13.3 inch model. Uh, so that is, again, a really good one. Now this one is even less, it's $1,099. Um, and I'm not sure what it has less than it because it still has the i7, it still has the, the 11th gen i7, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 storage, Thunderbolt 4, Wi-Fi 6, like everything you could want. I think I would just go with this one. I'm not sure what the difference between the two models are in a quick search, but I'll leave you guys a link for it. Uh, but this one is better, in my opinion, than the Samsung laptops. Maybe it's the UI that's not as good. I mean, it has Thunderbolt 4. It's 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 not as lightweight, but it's 2.45 pounds. So Samsung is lighter. But for that price difference, uh, for $1,099, that is a much, much better deal, in my opinion, than the Samsung laptops. So I'm going to put that in the chat, and that would be a really good one to go for. Um, so let's see. Whoa, how much questions flooded? Everybody drink. Um, so if I would actually get a Samsung, so to finish your question, which one would I get? Um, I would actually get, I was looking at this for my brother who wants a laptop, but wants it, you know, at a more affordable price. So they have the Ion Flex 2 that wasn't announced with the pros, but did come out at the same time. It's a brand new one. And it has a QLED display instead of an OLED display, which QLED is actually brighter than OLED. So there is an advantage there. It doesn't have the same long, long battery life that that one has. But I mean, for the price, it's it's definitely a better price. So I would honestly probably get that one um, just because that seems more, um, I want the best bang for the buck. Uh, the only way I would recommend getting the Samsung laptops, like I said after the video, was if you get a trade-in. Because the trade-in's really good. You have like a $100 credit you get right now too with it. And you also uh, can get um, like buds for free. So th there are a lot of the great things for Samsung, but it really, I would say I would only get it right now with the trade-in. Yes, trade-in deals are good, bring it under a grand, and that's what I would recommend getting it with. If you have a trade-in, that's what's really good. Trade-in an old Samsung tablet, it's, it's really good for that price then. Fold 3 Ultra 5G or wait for the Note 21 Ultra. I am not looking forward to the Fold 3 at this point. So I would actually wait to the Note 21. Um, as of right now, from what we know, the Fold 3 will not have uh, the high-end cameras um, that we're looking for, basically, uh, like the S21 Ultra. So I would definitely uh, wait on that. Um, I love my Z Flip 5G hands down, Razer 5G. Uh, thoughts on RCS messages, uh, the development of it. Um, I mean, RCS is, is basically hit a wall. It, it needs Google or Samsung to say F the carriers and just do it themselves. That's what it needs now because the carriers are going to not really care about it anymore. They're not gonna really be involved in the development of it. So uh, yeah, it, um, it's up to Samsung and Google now. Samsung because it's the biggest manufacturer of Android uh, in terms of hardware, and Google because it's the biggest software, um, obviously component uh, for Android. So it's up to them now. Um, tech deals and past tech deals are there. Thank you, Quiet Storm, for that. Can we use AirPods? Can you? Sure. 
I don't know if you're just kind of spamming because you've put a lot, but yeah. Um, hello, Kevin from Florida. Um, I don't see why not. There are all kinds of Bluetooth devices there, but yeah. Need a replacement. Uh, I need to replace my S10 battery. Safe to buy off Amazon? Um, I would go to a repair center. Um, you break I fix is one of the uh, nationwide Samsung certified repair centers. Um, or even go to a Best Buy and see if they can start you with off with the process there. But I would not open up my S10 Plus unless you really know what you're doing. Is it safe to buy off Amazon? Yeah, kind of. I I would just re I would just really uh, recommend doing it um, with a technician, certified technician from Samsung, uh, or sorry, a certified technician of Samsung doing it. Um, no high end cameras. Uh, then the phone better not have a high-end price. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, it's still going to, um, and that's why I'm not a fan of it. Are you planning on going to CES next year in Las Vegas? Absolutely. I cannot wait to go back to CES in Las Vegas. Uh, the digital experience was honestly nothing compared to the regular experience there. I just definitely miss it. So, yeah, I, I definitely I cannot wait for CES for sure. Uh, promotion of any kind without permission is prohibited. <laughs> what is the best uh, text message app? Thank you. Um, I honestly use the one built in typically. So that is typically the Samsung text messaging app or the Google text messaging app, whichever uh, device I happen to be using. But those are the two that I personally use. Um, hey, Ricky, me and my wife always tune into your show. We keep up a good job. Wow, thank you guys so much for that. Um, is there anything you don't know about tech? You're so knowledgeable. Uh, well, thank you very much for that. Uh, there's lots I don't know about tech, uh, honestly. I don't know. Uh, coding is one of the biggest things that I've tried to get into, but just have never been able to. Uh, so that's probably the biggest thing that I could tell you off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, that, that's one of the biggest things for sure. Have you been following, uh, the Lewis Ramson, uh, and right to repair movement? Um, not entirely. Um, I, I did read a couple of articles and then I end up watching, uh, Linus, uh, on his right to repair, um, spiel, which I thought was very good and insightful to be quite honest. Um, I know MKB just, uh, MKBHG just did one. I have not seen that one yet. Uh, but that one is one I plan on watching probably tomorrow. Um, overall, I do absolutely believe in the right to repair. Um, that it, it shouldn't be so restrained um, for you to be able to have a business that can be able to repair these components that are standard, but you just can't get them. And so, yeah, it, it really is something that I feel that needs to be standardized and that needs to be more easy because it's only hurting customers by not allowing more places be able to repair. Um, and of course, you know, the biggest issue of this is Apple. Um, they've always had this issue. Um, as far as I know, I can't think of a time when MacBooks were able to repair anywhere. Um, at least on the last 20 years. Uh, so definitely, I think it would be something very um, necessary uh, to look more into. And I think and I think and I hope that it is going to kind of bust those doors open. Apple's on the back burner for a lot of things right now, um, as well as they should be, uh, because they have always been such a marketing BS company. It's one of the reasons the reason why I have such friction with Apple is not because I don't believe that their products are good. I just believe their marketing tends to mislead so very much. And, you know, this wall garden they put up, this whole thing that they do, none of it is good for consumers. It's good for them. Um, and that's, that's always been my biggest issue with Apple. It's not the fact that, oh, all their products suck because they don't. A lot of their products are great. 
it's it's their marketing that I've always had an issue with more than anything else. And I and I say that being a you know having a degree in marketing and acknowledging that their marketing is genius, but at the same time not the best when it comes to that. So uh, yeah, for sure. Um, ooh, that is the perfect segue to end about um, have I gotten into cryptocurrency and what are my thoughts on it. I will get to that before the end because that leads into the video that's coming out uh, either tomorrow night or Tuesday. It depends how long the Tech Deals video takes me. But there is a very important video that I have for you guys. Um, and uh, I guess I'll talk about it now before the ending. Um, I will do a shameless plug, though. And I got my new beanie. So, yeah, got the new beanie just came in. Uh, it is one size fits all, and I can tell you I have an extremely big head, as my wife has uh, occasionally told me. So, I basically, uh, it is a little bit tight on me, but uh, it should fit most people just fine. But yeah, I I'll do that with the beanie on. Um, so, what I was going to say was, um, yes, I have gone into cryptocurrency a bit, and there is a really cool thing that is more in its infancy stage than all these cryptocurrencies that are being talked about. Um, and uh, I've just gotten started on it. And this is something that utilizes your home internet. So your home internet that you're paying for every month, if you use this device, you have to purchase a device um, and it's a sizable price. Um, and if you purchase this device and just plug it in set it up with the app and forget about it, you can make money. And when I say that, I don't say that lightly, but to give you an idea of how much I made in my first week and what I'm going to be talking about in the review, um, it's gone up a little bit since I filmed it, but that's how much I made in my first week. So yeah, stay tuned for that video. And I hope you guys get in on this because... Um, yeah, it's, it's well worth it. It's a really cool thing. I'm very lucky to be a part of and something that, again, this is a video you will not want to see how to make money every month through your Wi-Fi, home internet. It's going to be awesome. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's all I have to say about the crypto part. And it's, it's something new. It's something really cool. And again, I do my research in everything that I look into so you know if I believe in it, I'm not sponsored by it. I am going to tell you like it is. And if I really say this is something that I would love for every single one of you guys to get because it will help you because I am do I'm getting this for my closest friends out there um, and and would recommend it. Definitely an awesome thing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Does Samsung A52 can get Google Pixel camera installed? Um, y yes, I believe I had one that worked actually for it. It's, it's very hot with this light actually. Um, I believe I had one that did work for it. Um, but unfortunately with the Google cameras, I can never send you guys the link anymore. Just because of the fact that unfortunately... Unfortunately, I really uh, got screwed over for some reason. Um, a video that I showed downloading it, I got a YouTube strike against me. I, I, I still don't know why to this very day because I've asked Google, YouTube for that and they say, oh, well, it violated the... What did it violate? What did it violate putting a link to download an app outside of the Google Play Store. Maybe that was their big beef with it. But yeah, um, I can never send, um, again, an APK outside of Google Play Store because of that. And I never will, unfortunately, just because of that one incident. But yes, I'm almost positive I had one for the A52 on there that worked fine. Um, Apple is the biggest opponent, yes. Uh, secondary is probably John Deere, McDonald's franchise, give me a moment, and ice cream machines. <laughs> Over there, ice cream machines. Yes, their ice cream machines are probably the biggest problem ever, actually. 
Uh, but yes, uh, but yeah, no, the, the, there are a lot of things, but yeah, the biggest opponent for it is definitely, I would say, Apple. Um, and then, yeah, the other ones uh, are definitely another problem for sure. Um, AirTag versus Samsung SmartTag, con pros and cons of both. Um, I'll be quite honest with you. I have not used my Samsung SmartThings tag. I just, I never used it. I got one and I have never used it. Uh, it's just not something that has interested me because I'm not traveling right now and I feel that's the reason you really want uh, tags. I have two tile trackers that I use on a weekly basis and they stick on to find my remotes. So those are great, like those are awesome uh, for that purpose. And I really like, I think if you're going to get a home one, I would honestly say tile is just so easy and it syncs up with Google too. So I just, I asked my Google assistant, hey, you know, uh, find the Samsung TV remote or find the Google TV remote and it will sound off which one I'm looking for and I will be able to find it. And that has saved me many headaches over the past year since I've gotten that. So I, I definitely like those for in-house, I would say very easily, because they're not just one size thing, uh, which I think AirTags are too big for obviously like a remote control. Great size for something like keys and luggage and a wallet and a purse kind of thing, uh, but it, it depends on what you're looking for, really. So that, that's my big thing uh, with it for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't gotten into smart tags as much, so I really have to kind of look into that more. Oh, wow, look at that beating, the ultra edition. Uh, come with 51st day questions, shameless plug. Thank you for reminding me about my shameless plug for the app that I created. As again, I always re recommend, uh, if you download our app, 51st day questions, it's a great game. I created it. Um, very fun, just a good game to play on a first date or on a date with your significant other that you've been with for 50 years. It really is just a fun icebreaker or a time killer, depending on which way you look at it, to play with a significant other. And as we get back into, you know, being able to see people again and meet people again, it is definitely a cool thing to have. So yeah, 50 first date questions, links in the description down below for Android and iOS. Um, oh, hey, big, thank you so much for the super chat donation. I really do appreciate it. Thank you again. I, I really do appreciate it. Again, if you have other questions, feel free to ask them. Um, NFT is the next wave. NFT is really uh, something for sure. Um, kind of like a phone farming. Uh, phone farming is very interesting. I am uh, currently testing out um a um miner to see if it actually works but uh really with with phone miners none of them uh can be you can't get any of them on the google play store and that rings bells to me so i'm going to see if they actually work or not i'm testing that out right now uh since we're getting a little bit more into crypto uh but that is a big thing that i find uh, right now with crypto uh, bro, I need help. Can you tell me how to get rid of the Easter egg on the S21 Ultra? Um, I've never pulled up the Easter egg, so I'm not sure. Um, when will the video drop? Again, either Monday night, if I, um, still have time. I don't know how long the Tech Deals video will take me to, uh, tomorrow. I do that in the morning. Um, and then, you know, family time and then uh, seeing how it is. Um, and then if not tomorrow night, it will be Tuesday morning. So one of the two. I will finish it tomorrow uh, for sure. It's just one that'll schedule for upload either Monday night or Tuesday morning. But it's going to be one that you definitely want to check out. Um... Glad you have gotten some good results in the crypto thing. Here's the thing about the crypto thing. I, it, it is not something I had to buy crypto coins and hopefully they went up. It's a way of just using your Wi-Fi to mine it. And it's a really cool, awesome, awesome thing. Um, 
I discovered you with your Poco phone F1 rent. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. Uh, I do remember that. I was so annoyed because I really wanted to get into uh, the Poco phone and it wasn't available in the U.S. and it doesn't work in the U.S. And I was just so annoyed and pissed off that all of these YouTubers, that their main audiences in the U.S. were praising this phone. And I'm just like, you know, you know what you're doing. You are going to make people buy this phone in the U.S. and they're going to be screwed. And it was just so annoying to see that so many times. What is an NFT in layman's terms? So an NFT is the easiest way to think of it is when you go to social media and you see someone is, is an official account, like they have a check mark next to their name. So whether that be Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know, if they have a check mark next to their name, that is an official account. So this is what an NFT is. It is a checked mark of an image. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean you own this image and everyone has to pay you royalties every time they use it? Every time a meme is used of this one image, everyone has to pay you? No. NFTs, in my opinion, are as of right now worthless in actuality. But what makes them valuable is the mere fact that people perceive them as valuable, which really is kind of like what art is, right? If you perceive this canvas that has been painted on is valuable, and everyone else does, everyone else is like, yeah, yeah, that's valuable, that's valuable, that's valuable. It becomes valuable. So that is what an NFT is. It is basically you officially own this image, but at the time you cannot do anything different from anyone else with that image. You just officially own the image. Um, so that, that is NFT in layman's terms. Um, and again, the reason why it's valuable is because people perceive it as valuable, just like regular art. It is, it is in the eye of the beholder, if people perceive it as valuable, it becomes valuable. Very simple and easy. Um, so that, that is NFT in the easiest uh, terms. And again, that's why it's very confusing because people don't get it. They're like, wait, what? Like, why is this so valuable, you know? And then it's a whole thing of why do you own it even if you're not the one who made it sometimes? Maybe someone took the photo of you and you're in the photo and you can claim it. Or you took the photo, you're not in the photo, and you can claim it. So it's all these different things that go about um, and it really is just new. So it's, it's very, very interesting in terms of will it always be valuable? Is it something you know, that will be a flash in the pan. Crypto wasn't. Crypto is not a flash in the pan because it still has stuck around for a long period of time. Crypto is going to be more of a bubble bursting thing, right? Like it's going to have its up and hills and up and down. And it's effectively crypto is becoming a new stock market. Um, and that is why crypto has lasted because it, it is basically had a, not only perception of value for a long term, but it really is, it has its up and downs. It has its value go up and down. So it really is that. So yeah, that, that is what um, it looks like to be. I had a mobile hotspot I carried, did everything uh, through VoIP and used Google Voice. It was so, so. Oh, you're saying for uh, the Poco phone. Yeah, I totally understand that. Yeah, it, it, you got to set up this whole thing just to be able to make it work, right? For sure. Uh, well, thanks as always. Uh, I appreciate the 25 things uh, you do on the uh, S21 Ultra. Helped me out a lot, dude. Keep watching your videos, sir. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. On my Note 20 Ultra 5G longtime Note user, like my current camera system, disappointed with the camera on the Z Fold 3. Sounds like as if the S22 Ultra will have a great camera. Yes, it does definitely sound like the S22 will have a great camera. Not only will it have possibly the 200 megapixel camera, 
Which again, don't worry about the megapixels so much. It's gonna be a bigger sensor. That is what's important. Um, which is awesome to have even a bigger sensor for low light specifically. Um, so that's gonna be one part of it. But also the secondary part of that is going to be that um, you're gonna have a better optical zoom even than we currently have now. So it's gonna be a really interesting pro uh, prospect for sure. Should I wait to upgrade to the S22 Ultra? I would, I would, I would wait to upgrade to the S22 Ultra um, more than the Flip, more than the Z Fold 3 at this point. Wait till it's announced and then I'll tell you definitively if uh, the cameras really are, you know, garbage for the price. And then we'll go from there. That's like the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. I bought it and sold it in two days later for the S21 Ultra. It sucked here. Yeah, I, I completely understand. And I and I this is that's why I don't like YouTubers like God guys, at least say that in your video. By the way, if you're planning on buying this in the US, because 51% or whatever much percentage of my viewers are from this market, you know, that's a million plus viewers for this video. Just let them know. I mean, it's just just let them know. Uh, that is unfortunately glad you got a better phone now. <laughs> I remember when you could only buy Bitcoin on the dark web. I remember that. Government had hated it because it was untraceable it was. I remember seeing it as low as $5 and it's literally being uh, being into question. Yeah, oh my God, do I wish I bought Bitcoin that early. Oh, that hurts so much. It was something that I was like, no, I mean, well, no, well, and unfortunately, during that time of Bitcoin, you know, I just, I was getting myself financially uh, under a hole that I had put myself in financially and I got out of it. Uh, but that, if I hadn't been in that hole, I do think like, man, I could have put money aside. And quite frankly, you could have always put money aside for Bitcoin, right? When it was like a hundred bucks, something like that. Obviously we could have done it, but um, yeah, it came and went and the time has passed on Bitcoin, but there are definitely other ones some have more, far more potential than others that uh, we that I'm looking into and hope to help out with. I still can't find the RCS on Samsung Messenger. Really strange. Uh, can't find the Vo LTE either. Um, the Samsung one uh, should be on by default, quite frankly, now on the Samsung Messenger with the newest version of the app. Uh, it's not saying it's it's not a setting you have to turn on anymore for T-Mobile. Um, but um, again, I'm not sure. Look at the uh, what I I said a, a, a P, the API. What, what was it? Um, oh God! Now that's gonna bug me. I have to see what it's called. Um, the APN, look at the APN to see if, uh, it is correct and, uh, make sure all the settings are correct in your APN. I was terrified just being on the dark web. <laughs> it's reputation precedes itself. Oh man. The things I've done on the dark web. Never forget that night. All right. Uh. So guys, uh, that will be it. Again, if you are watching this video, let me know what day you prefer for that uh, town hall live video, Friday or Saturday, and in the morning on Friday or at night on Friday or Saturday. Let me know in the comment section, guys. Thank you as always so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you can, really, it helps me out. Give a like, thumbs up before you leave uh, and share this video so it can be seen by more people. Thank you as always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y the YouTube tech guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you.